All right, so we are here at the, uh, the beautiful Act Black Box. Um, Robbie has uh, asked us to come research the, the history of this building and see if we can find any old relics, uh, you know, possibly that they could put on display and, you know, and, and show about some of the arts and entertainment history of this building. Uh, so the building itself was uh, originally built uh, as the Castillo Hotel, mm -hmm. later renamed to the Hager Hotel. It was actually built in 1914. Um, and it actually featured a basement restaurant, mm -hmm. two retail shops on the first floor, uh, apartments on the second floor, and then the third floor was actually just used for like warehouses and storage for, for most of its life. I think it's apartments now, mm -hmm. but originally it was just storage. Um, as with many locations in Hagerstown, because it was built so long ago, it's likely there might have originally been basement tunnels that linked this building to other buildings next to it, possibly even buildings across the street. Uh, and because it was here during Prohibition, there's also a possibility that if those tunnels were here, those tunnels were probably used to smuggle alcohol. Um, so having a restaurant in the basement probably would have also made it an ideal location for a speakeasy as well. So one of the things we're going to look for today is we're going to look for any indications of was there actually a speakeasy down there? You know, might we find an old tunnel? That would be awesome. That would be. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that's why we, we've actually got the, the bore scope here uh, and now I, we can actually put that inside the wall and it has lights on it so we can see, you know, hey, is there anything behind this wall? Uh, and then we also have the ground scanner. Uh, that's a ground and wall scanner and it'll actually give you basically a radar image of what's behind or is there nothing behind. Mm -hmm. uh, so the hotel actually has a pretty deep arts and entertainment history. Uh, it was very frequently uh, used by people that were performing at the Maryland Theater, which is only a couple uh, stores away. away. Yep. Uh, and then there were actually several performances here at the hotel. Uh, one performance was a gentleman named Johnny Reynolds in 1917, which was only a couple years after the building was built, who was a human fly. Mm -hmm. He climbed the outside of the building, doing tricks the entire time that he's climbing the outside of the building. Real life Spider-Man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then when he got to the roof, they had on the roof for him a table and chairs, which he then proceeded to use to do additional tricks at the edge of the roof. Oh, nice. Yeah, so also quite terrifying. Did you make it back but, down? Yeah, he made it back down. Okay. Yeah, he's arrived. So, um, and then more interestingly, now I haven't found a whole lot of information about this guy, but there was a, a gentleman by the name of Professor B.G. Burt, who played a piano in what's currently the bar area, and he played the piano for 18 hours straight in an effort to beat his own endurance record back in 1926. Uh, I couldn't find much other information about whether he actually beat his record or not, but I also noticed on the newspaper article that it seemed to be also plastered with ads for the piano that he was using, so I'm wondering if the whole thing might have just been a publicity stunt for the piano mm -hmm. Um Unfortunately, the Hager Hotel uh, also has seen its share of tragedy. Uh, in March 24th, 1926, a fire gutted a significant part of the, the hotel. Um, in the process, there was a musician that was struck by a beam while he was evacuating the hotel. He, he was injured, he wasn't killed. They believe nobody was killed, but of course it was a very extensive fire, so you can't say for sure whether everybody actually got out or not. Um, August 17, 1940, a uh, 17-year-old boy was in one of the apartments on the second floor, and he just suddenly became ill and dropped dead. Just completely, mysteriously dropped dead. Hmm. They suspect it was a heart attack, but they never knew why. <laughs> uh, December 20th, 1941, a resident was a victim of a very brutal attack in which uh, two men actually threw him down the steps after he discovered them uh, trying to steal $10 from him. 
in his room. And then 1947 in October, a man who actually resided here at the hotel was crushed to death while working at a nearby farm. So the hotel has definitely seen its share of tragedy. Uh, more recent times, the former hotel rooms are now all apartments. Mm -hmm. uh, the basement and first floor uh, are the homes of former restaurants, including Flying Pie Company and CNO Taco slash CNO Infusions. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, as part of this documentary, we're also planning on trying to get some of the uh, former employees of some of the, the restaurants here talk to them about their experiences working here especially with how you know how many patrons they would get after a Maryland theater show mm -hmm. stuff like that uh, so we're really you know super excited here we're, we're gonna just basically look in every nook and cranny that hasn't been touched by remodeling and see can we find some of the history of this building can we find some of the original pieces that have been lost over time. They might actually even tell a story about this this building. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'm super excited. Uh, so comments, questions. I mean, I, it's it's incredible. We've uh, uh, Authentic Community Theater took over this building in March um, yeah. and turned it into the beautiful Act Black Box Studio, where we're doing shows every weekend, doing different concerts and events. And um, you know, we we spent a lot of time remodeling um, and, and a lot of time cleaning. So. I don't know if you're gonna be able to find anything. I think we've gotten everything, okay. but I mean, I, I um, you know, we're we're interested in the history of everything. We're interested to see what what went on here. What, right. um, what once once I spoke to you and you started mentioning tunnels and and prohibition, <laughs> I was like, you know what? I, I actually think of a couple of spots where I'm like, there was something there before, right. uh, that we saw. So I'm really interested to find out what's here and uh, be able to take that history and, and make it part of our. Um, make it a part of our, our little world that we have. Very good. Very good. So, all right. Let's well, let's get to it. Let's see what we can find. Let's find out. All right. All right. Excellent. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I have the, the inspection scope, mm -hmm. and I know there's some some loose area here around yeah. the bar that haven't. Yeah. You all never touched it. No reason. No. To no. So so I'm going to use the inspection scope to see you know anything fall down behind the cracks. Mm -hmm. So. From the scope down here, not seeing anything. I've seen cobwebs. That's about it. Not much anything there. Let's see here. Nothing. Alright. Here. That's all there. And all of this has been in place forever. All we, yeah. did, was, all we did was paint. Yeah. That's it. There's a hole in the wall down there. There's a hole in the wall down there? Yeah. Alright, we got here. What's that? What's just a little wire. Put down here. But look, look, it's got it's got burn marks on it. Mm -hmm. So that was probably from the fire. Interesting. So that's cool. Well, now I'm kind of mad at my team for not finding that back there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's cool. All right. Well, hey, there's first find of the day. Let's see if there's anything else back in there. No, I don't see 
see anything else back here. All right, so I'm up the floor. Actually called you in before I had him redo all the floors. <laughs> and it was all ripped up. It's all good, man. You just never know what you're gonna find. That's all. We got something in there. Oh no, it's just like a piece of electrical tape or something. Yeah, it's junk. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not gonna bother trying to fish that out. <laughs> <laughs> Crack under that one too? Alright. Oh yeah, one. Crack here. Let's take a look. Okay, so so there's nothing in there, but take a look here once, Robbie. You can see there's actually the original floor. Yeah. So that's kind of cool. Picture that. Take a picture of that. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Those yours? No. They were dust on the bottom here. Oh, oh nice. <laughs> they in the only dusty spot. Yeah, in the dusty <laughs> spot there. <laughs> nice. Huh. Well, there we go. We found more uh, more stuff you weren't expecting. So. Uh, <laughs> yeah, a little bit uh, liquid on there. Prohibition liquid. 29280. I don't know what the hell that would mean. Mm -hmm. Alright, well, there's more relics for us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're, they're stuck together. They're like glued together. What the hell? That's weird. Mm -hmm. Alright. So, I'm going to turn this off for now. That's sweet. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it's moonshine. Who knows? And we'll uh, like it and see what it is. No, no, no I'll it. pass on that. Put money on the table. So, <laughs> all right. So let's. Uh, what else we got here? We got what's next? There's a little, uh, a little, a little prep kitchen, kitchen in there, right? All right. So let's let's head in there next. All right. So looking in here, did did you guys remodel all this? Yeah, we did. So okay. there's actually, um, if if you can get back here, Cam, we were always wondering where this drain led to. Okay. Um, yeah, this was all remodeled and okay. We're gonna get some of this, uh, uh yeah, 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 some okay. stuff out of your way here. All right, get back there. Let me uh, fire this back up once, and then maybe we can get up up in the old yeah. little pipes. Yeah, we up. can look in there. Yeah. Cool. Take right. the liquor down from the moonshine stuff. <laughs> Well, you know, so the, the fire, when they had the fire here, there was a dumbwaiter. Oh, yeah? And the dumbwaiter actually spread the fire through the rest of the building. Huh. So that was unfortunate. Uh, I'm not seeing anything up there. Some water going there. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean that's just that's just a regular sewage drain. There's a tomato slice in there. Is there? Oh, no, no, no. I'm sorry. It's a can lid. Oh, nice. <laughs> I can't I can't reach down in there and get it, but yeah, you might want to have a have a plumber clear that out. Yeah. So. Yeah. Nope. Nothing in there. Um. See, there's a hole in the wall over here. Now that might be a good spot to, to check. Let's yeah, check yeah. this hole here. Mm, let's see. Nope. Nothing in there. Yeah, and you, you can see it, it goes all the way back to the stud. There's no. Yeah. Nothing there, so that's okay. All right. Um. Let's see. You got anywhere else to 
In here, I don't think so. I don't so. think so. Yeah, I think this room's gonna be a bust. Mm. That's okay. Um, you know, hey, who thought we were gonna get that lucky in the in the first room, you know? Yeah. So Alright, cool. Alright, we'll move on. Alright. There's a whole lot of places in here that we can search. Um you know, look at here, like, you know, most of these are, are sealed up. You, you guys mostly redid this whole area, didn't you? Yeah, and there used to be a pizza oven there, wasn't there? There used to be a pizza oven back there in the corner, yeah. and that was all ripped out. So, yeah, everything in here was redone, and unfortunately, pretty much every hole in here was kind of yeah. plugged up. And, yeah, and so there's so a little one right here. here. Yeah, let's hold right here. Is there? Okay. All right, well, let's look at that one first. Two of them? Okay. I think that was the ventilation. Oh, was the ventilation from the pizza oven. All right, yeah, yeah, we won't bother with that then. This, they're, they're not gonna put anything in the. the but ventilation one just has like looks like you can have one right coming out. Ah, but it's like the size of your phone. All right, so let's see if we got anything in here. Uh, huh? Yeah, I think there's there's, there's like there's something metal in there. Let me see if I can. Reach in there and get it. Hang on. Yeah, hold that for me. Ah, got it. So, oh, we got we got a spoon to go with your fork or your knife. I mean, so uh, yeah, that's got burn marks on it too. So we put spoons in walls. <laughs> this is very, this is very yeah, that's, that's a very weird place for a spoon, but you know, I mean, we've, we've found all sorts of weird stuff when we're doing the, the actual uh, History Dump Runner show, uh -huh. and you know, it's like, this does not belong here, why is this here? Right. Like, you know, the, the one episode we did, we actually had, uh, we think there's some sort of molds or something that were used by the railroad for cast metal, uh -huh. and they're in the middle of a farm field. Hmm. So I was like, why, why, why is this here? Yeah, yeah, well they said it used to be a dump. So who knows? I mean, you know, one thing one thing that has been done in the past is when construction contractors build or remodel a place mm -hmm. is they'll actually put some of their trash in the wall to get rid of it. Like, you know. So so maybe maybe somebody was using this for their lunch mm -hmm. and they just left it and forgot it or something and then after the fire, it's like, well, let's get rid of it and put it in the wall. So, huh. All right, so another interesting find. Let's see if we got anywhere else here to uh, to look through. But I think most of the stuff is is pretty well. Yeah, I'm not seeing anywhere else. So. Oh, right here, just pop. Okay. Oh, wow! Look at that. Look at that. That looks like it's slightly like making burn. Yeah, so that might have been actually from the fire. No, not seeing anything else in there. All right. So. Oh, yeah, okay. So, what do you need, Jeff? Insulating good. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I saw that shiny bit. I was like, oh man, we got more metal down there. No, it's just insulating board. I was all excited. I'll take a picture of that. Alright. Cool. Alright. Buried in the wall. Yeah. Oh, you, you know, you, you never know what's going to be in the wall. You really don't. So, might be treasure. Who knows? That'd be nice. Well, it's treasure to keep it, right? Um, you know, there's there's interesting precedent on that. So, and, and I I only know this because I had to research it for uh, one of our episodes. So in Baltimore in 1930s, I think it was, uh, some boys playing in the basement of their leased building that they were in. It was where their apartment was. Stumbled on this old metal pot. Mm. All right, 
and actually inside the pot was 5,000 gold coins. Wow. Okay. Um, there was a big long lawsuit uh, out of it because the landlord was claiming well, it's his building, so it's mm -hmm. it should be his. They ended up, uh, I think they ended up splitting it between the landlord and the, the boys that found it. But what's really interesting about that gold was it was actually, uh, that building was originally owned by an associate of John Wilkes Booth. So they believe that gold may have actually been involved in, in the Abraham Lincoln, Lincoln assassination. This is payment. Yeah. So, 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 but the precedent there is that, yeah, you, you get to keep at least part of it, yeah. but, but probably the building area would. Well, if we find anything good, we're not going to put it on the video. <laughs> we're going to be honest with it, okay? <laughs> Are you kidding? We, we find anything good, that's going to make fantastic television. But it'll be better in my pocket, though. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's let's move on. Let's see what else we can yeah, find. Yeah, absolutely. All right. We didn't realize it at the time, but uh, as soon as we entered the basement, the camera stopped recording all sound. And I, I can't explain why. It's still a mystery to me what caused it to stop recording sound, because as soon as we left the basement, it was able to record sound again. You'll notice a data error or possibly even a data corruption message on the screen multiple times in this segment of the video. The camera appeared to be having problems encoding the video, but checking the SD card after we left the basement, I could find nothing wrong with the card itself. You'll notice on the ceiling multiple red spots. These are not blood. Uh, these are actually uh, caulking to meet fire code regulations. Now at this point, Robbie's just giving us a tour of the basement. And we really haven't noticed anything odd yet other than the, the camera operator, she noticed that the battery was giving an error and seemed to be draining a little bit faster than expected. Looking on top of the walk-in cooler, we found a small squeeze bottle with some sort of red liquid inside. Now, we didn't retrieve the squeeze bottle, but we found a piece of paper next to it that was speaking about how to use it to caulk for the fire system. So this was actually the squeeze bottle used in the caulking that I discussed earlier.
for the most part, the kitchen in the basement was pretty quiet uh, until I opened the closet. And that's when things started to get a little bit weird. While he was exploring the closet, JB found two silver serving trays. Both of these trays were covered in some sort of a brown substance, some sort of dirt or dust perhaps. And interestingly enough, watch how the camera reacts when he picks up each of the serving trays. And if the brown substance wasn't odd enough, the second serving tray actually appeared to have on it what looked like dried blood. Uh, and I swear I could even smell what smelled like blood when JB handed me that tray. So I'm wondering right now if perhaps maybe there was just a water leak in that room and the water had high iron content. Uh, because for those who aren't aware, when you have high iron content in your water, typically the water actually gets a, a red rust colored appearance. So that might have been a, a plausible explanation for the color of the serving trays. The rest of the kitchen area was pretty uneventful, so we went ahead and included the rest of the footage here though for completeness. As you can see, the rest of the kitchen is pretty boring.
the stone and cinder block areas back behind the kitchen that we searched, there was surprisingly nothing in there. Uh, up until this point, we had actually had some pretty good luck when finding things, but the rest of this area was a bust. Our next two finds were pretty interesting. The first one was a bottle cap that was a beer bottle cap, I believe, from the 1980s. And then also I found a beer mug, uh, and it seemed to be pretty old. It, it was actually covered in a, a thin layer of some of that brownish substance that was on the, the serving trays. Looking back, that beer mug really freaks me out. Uh, I'm not going to lie, I, I'm still kind of freaked out about it. And you'll understand why later in this segment of the video. So now we're searching the doors to nowhere, and I can only assume that this used to be a tunnel that would lead underneath of South Potomac Street. Tucked away behind the wall were, well, what I thought was two jars of moonshine. And having the, the mason jars there really confirmed my suspicion that there was probably a speakeasy down there during Prohibition.
So when I pulled out the second jar, I thought that uh, it was going to be moonshine, but then I saw that there was actually red liquid inside of the jar, uh, which could really only be described as blood. Uh, at this point, I thought that Robbie was just screwing with us, and uh, then I, I think I quickly realized after he actually started becoming visibly agitated that, no, he wasn't playing a prank on us. He didn't plant these items. These, this was, this is actually probably a, a jar with blood in it. And I'm very baffled why that would be there or how long ago it was put there. Around the same time we found the mason jars, the camera operator, she told me that the camera was getting very low on battery. Uh, that really baffled me because we actually started the day with a full battery and we hadn't been recording all that long. Uh, so fortunately JB was able to go get the uh, spare battery pack for us and we were able to uh, connect the battery pack to the camera and start charging it again. Remarkably, while the battery was dying on the camera, apparently the battery on my uh, inspection scope was also dying. Uh, you'll actually see at this point I, I turn the scope off because it's about ready to die, and I have to call it a day with using the inspection scope because I didn't bring any extra batteries. Having just found a mason jar with blood in it, I think we were all a little bit hesitant to search the, the next closet. Uh, finally, JB stepped forward and he started searching it. Uh, he didn't find anything, but the camera operator actually caught something very interesting. Nobody noticed this until we reviewed the footage later. But if you watch between the red arrows coming up here, you'll see what can only be described as an orb, or maybe a ghost. Now, I'm not saying it was a ghost, but with all the other weird things that happened while we were in this basement, I, you know, I, I can't think of any logical scientific explanation for what we saw. Now at this point, I think it was JB who might have said that he felt like he was being watched while we were down there in the basement. And the, not possible because there's nobody else down there. And you know, you can see in the footage that we're the only ones down there. We were the only ones in the building that day. You know, there was a little bit of maintenance earlier, but when we went down to the basement, all the maintenance folks left. And we confirmed upstairs that the the doors were all locked. There was no way any of the maintenance folks got back in while we were down here in this basement.
Now this next room is a, uh, a furnace room, and we found some interesting stuff in it. Uh, we found an old, what looks like a parmesan shaker, uh, I think maybe like an old funnel or something. And we also found in there a uh, old beer mug. Uh, same style as the, the previous one we found, but it's covered in a lot more of the thick brown substance on the inside. Uh, and also had some, some odd white marks on the outside of it that we weren't quite sure what it was. Maybe it was paint. also found was another spoon, uh, and this one was once again covered in ash and burn marks similar to the previous pieces of silverware we found. So when JB pulled out another mason jar, I thought, oh, hey, more moonshine. Or, hey, more blood. Uh, but what was actually inside that jar really disturbed me. Inside of the mason jar was looked like a burned plastic skeleton, a bunch of burned up matches, and on the inside of the jar was actually what looked like small handprints in blood streaking down the side, as if someone were actually trapped inside of the jar.
So we're all a little bit on edge at this point, um, but we've only got one room left in the basement to search. So we keep pressing on, and you know, I'm, I have zero explanation for what actually happens next. So this is the old coat check room, and what's really neat about this room is this room has not been remodeled in an extremely long time. Um, in fact, it looks like it hasn't been remodeled since the fire. And if, if you watch here, you'll actually see where we go into the, the closet at the end of the coat check room, and you'll see some of the old burnt up lumber from inside of the closet. Uh, but we didn't realize what else was in that closet until we looked down. And that's when we became uh, very disturbed. So in the corner of the closet is this bird skeleton, and it's completely covered in blood. And the skeleton, it's not just like laying there or anything like that. It's actually upright and just sitting there looking at us. And if, if you watch closely, the, the camera, it starts really freaking out when the camera operator gets close. So at this point, we're, we're done. Um, you know, we're, we're totally freaked out. I, I tell the, the crew, okay, you know what? Pack up everything. We are out of here. We are done. And we're getting irritated. Robbie's getting irritated because we both think that either we're pranking each other or this place is just freaking cursed. And so then we walk down the hallway back to the bar after we pick up stuff. And when we get to the bar, we just, we all see at the same time, and we just freeze. So the first beer mug that we found that was covered in the, the light brown film, uh, it's now been cleaned, and the brown film is gone and then replaced with what can only be described as a bloody handprint. I, I don't understand how we could have been pranked. I, I, I see no way that Robbie could have pulled that off. Robbie was in my sight the entire time we were filming. I have no explanation for how that handprint could have gotten there. So, you know, I'm, I'm very shocked at what happened at the Hager Hotel. You know, th this was supposed to be a regular documentary on this beautiful historic building in the, the Arts and Entertainment District. And, you know, the main floor, that's what it was, you know? We, we 
found some cool historical stuff and you know it told a nice story of you know hey here's here's some items from you know previous tenants here's some items from when the whole hotel was almost completely gutted by a fire but then you know we got down in that basement and it, it gives me chills thinking about what transpired down there. I still can't believe everything we saw. And at first I thought that I thought Robbie was was pranking us. I thought you know he was just having some fun you know as a way of, of thanking us for for coming in and doing that documentary and you know because Robbie and I were you know we're friends we joke around some but I mean at the very end there when we found that bloody handprint there's no way he could have faked that and there's nobody else in the building so, so how can a glass beer mug just magically have a bloody handprint show up on it? Especially when it's been sitting there on the, that bar by itself. I, I don't know. I'm, you know, I, I'm baffled. With, with everything we saw down there, I don't know what to think. You know, is it, was it ghosts? Was the place haunted? I don't know. I know I can't explain a few things. So, when people ask me, Kim, was all this real? You tell me. You saw the video. I, I, I don't know how to explain what we saw. Is, is there paranormal activity in that old hotel? I, I can't say. I'm not a ghost hunter. I, I just I just film historic videos, you know. All, all I do is hunt for history. Sometimes history doesn't want to be found. Sometimes history wants to be left alone. Maybe we should have left it alone. Yeah, talking with some of the former employees of the, the various places that have been there in the past, I'm, I know something's been going on there. And from what I've heard from people that are there now, Ever since our visit, things have started waking up. Things have started getting a little more activity now. I don't know what to make of it. So, is it haunted? You tell me. How did you feel starting out with the documentary? So starting out with this documentary, I went in just like anybody else would with suspicion and thinking that everything was just going to be fake. Um, figuring that there's been plenty of businesses in there, we shouldn't find anything. Nothing out of the ordinary should have stood out. And it would pr pretty much be a waste of time. Serving 
So I was down in the basement and I found this serving tray and it was, I don't know, eight to 10 inches. And it looked like it was covered in blood. At first I thought it was rust and I tried to scrape it with my fingernail and it didn't flake, like it didn't come off like rust did, it like flaked off of it. And the only thing that I could think of was somebody got mad at somebody in the kitchen and <laughs> bashed somebody in the head with it. Tell us about the mason jar with the burnt skeleton. So I went into this one closet that had, I believe it was just, no, it was the air conditioning unit that was in it. And I uh, ended up finding like an old jar that looked like some kind of salt shaker. Um, there was a spoon, I think, large, uh, that was like jabbed into the wall kind of, like somebody stuck it there for whatever reason. Um, but behind the air conditioning unit, there was this mason jar. And I couldn't see it, but I could, I mean, I couldn't see what was in it, but I could see it. So I reached back behind there and I grabbed it and I counted out. And I'm looking at this thing and there's like bones in it. And it looked like it had been charred on the one side. So I turned, you know, I kind of turned it around and kind of held it up to the light and I saw that there was matches in it. And then I started looking and it almost looked like a little bird skeleton, which... The only thing I can think of is somebody was doing some kind of ritual or somebody was putting a hex on someone. So the big question, do you think the Hecker Hotel is haunted? If I was asked if it was haunted, I would say if it isn't now, it definitely was. Um, There wasn't really any of those kind of standout moments where <clears throat> you walked into one room and it got ice cold or uh, you felt like a draft of wind go by. But knowing that that place has been renovated how many times, who knows? It's very odd to find that kind of stuff in there and you could just tell by the dust on everything that none of it was, none of it was new. No, it, it, it's been there for a while. So if I had to say yes, say no, I'd lean a lot more towards yes. Um, I was just really excited because I didn't know a lot about the history of the building. I knew it was historic and I had heard a lot about it, but I had never been in there even for any of the previous businesses. So I was just very excited to see the place and you know, find out what the history was. Um, and it, I, first impression was it looked beautiful and I was really excited um, just to get in there and, and see what we could find like, like I am for every other episode that we've done. So how did your attitude change once we got down in the basement? When we got down in the basement, I kind of, I don't know, I, I'm one of those people that just picks up on like weird vibes, I, I guess that's the best way to say it, and I, I did start to feel a little uneasy, but I, you know, I kind of just told myself that maybe it was just because it was like a super creepy old basement, and you know, due to the, the age of the place that it wouldn't be outside the realm of reason to think that, you know, maybe something just a little off kilter had happened there. So I just tried to dismiss that feeling and just continue with the shoot. So when we were in the one part with the uh, insulation in that one closet, you paused and you pointed the camera I, I mean, I, I have to admit that I thought 
that I saw something out of the corner of my eye. And I wasn't sure what it was. For all I know, it was like a mouse or something. Like it was up in the insulation in the basement. Um, but I also thought like, you know, maybe there was something cool, like some kind of relic up there or, or something that should actually catch my eye. Um, but when I, you know, was looking through the camera, I didn't see anything other than, you know, just the insulation and, and the exposed structure. Um, and I, I still have no idea what I, what I saw or what even made me look there to begin with. So I, I don't really know. So let's talk about the, the bird. <laughs> Do we have to talk about the bird? <laughs> um, so the bird, I've never seen anything like it. Um, I actually am, I really like finding skeletal remains of animals and things like that. Um, I, have a, I have a very uh, personal appreciation for the beauty of the dead. Um, on our last shoot, I found a raccoon skull. So, like, normally I would be very excited by something like this. But this bird was skeletal remains, but it was upright as if it were a live bird, you know, sitting perched. And it was also splashed with something red. I don't, it looked like blood, but I can't say for certain what it was. So I, it, at that point, I actually did get a, a physical chill and, and feel very uneasy. The beer mug was, honestly, the beer mug was what prompted me to just want to wrap up and get out of there because I had seen the beer mug moments before. Everyone had seen the beer mug moments before. And then to turn around and see that it now had a handprint on it that appeared to be blood or some sort of other viscous red substance. And to know that no one had entered or left the room and we were all together and that there was no way that any of us could have done this or it couldn't be a trick. And everyone actually started to get a little accusatory of each other like, you know, everybody kind of thought that one of us had messed with it as a joke. And when we realized that none of us had or none of us could have, it, just that inexplicable moment, like, that in my head is when I stopped being a skeptic and just got very nervous and very uneasy and just could not continue with the shoot. Whenever we do any of our episodes, part of the fun of our show is that we don't really go into any of our locations with much information. That way, the viewers get a chance to discover things with us. They get to watch us metal detect and dig or research. And then when we find things, we include the process where we find out what it is and try to identify it so that it's, it's like they're there with us. So, I mean, I, I did not go into this thinking about like, is it haunted or whatever? I went in this for the history, thinking that we might just find some cool relics like we do at every other shoot. Um, there was no reason for me to think that this, you know, was a show anything related to paranormal or haunting. That's not what we do. Um, but personally, flat out, I, I mean, I don't, I don't really know if I would use the word haunted. I, I something is weird there. They're inexplicable scary things that go on there and, and I'm at the point personally where I really want to learn more but I don't know if I if I would go there again so you know I, I guess we'll just have to wait for everybody else to see what I caught on camera and 
you guys can tell me. It was, uh, it, it was a creepy vibe, man. I, uh, you know when you turn lights off as a kid, you feel like someone's behind you, like as you turn them all off trying to get back to your bed? It was that kind of feeling. Did anything strange ever happen while you were working there? Uh, yeah. One night I, uh, I, I came out of the kitchen back into the main room, and uh, there was this gentleman in there looking for, I guess, looking for dinner or for a drink or something. I, I told him we was closed. Uh, and, I mean, he was nice. He, he turned around and walked out. But now that I think about it, he didn't really turn, like, left or right down the hallway. He just he just kind of faded into the dark. I didn't think nothing of it because the lights weren't on. But it, it, now that I think about it, it's kind of a weird experience. Do you think it's haunted? I, I I don't really know. I'm not an easy sell on that kind of stuff. I mean, I, the place had a vibe, but I, I don't really know. You know, there's all kinds of weird, creaky places around. You don't, you can't really tell.